welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles. It's not really, sort of a tutorial, but not really. Just want to um, show you guys something really interesting that, uh, well, a couple things in this video, and they both have to do with how uh, SCS in ATS for sure, I uh, don't know about ETS, but are modeling the effect of weight distribution and the effect of you know how they calculate and or do they calculate changes in configuration and how it pertains to weight distribution on the rig and in this case what we're going to show is uh, pardon the noise from the tub grinder over there we're in east glacier and this is great because if you remember in the live stream i was looking for a place that had a big hill we could test in dirt well, it just so happens when Recon was building this site, I happened to be on with them and we were messing around and testing this hill out to see if we could make it up it. And we put this load on a trailer just like this, a double low boy SCS, 55,000 pound Volvo hauler, and couldn't get up the hill. And I'm going to go right now. We're going to try and get this thing up the hill from this sign right here be our starting point and we're going to show what kind of difficulty we have because the point of this trailer is to spread the load out over a wider area so there is weight distributed through the jeep if you look at where the fifth wheel is it's closer to the jeep wheels than the truck wheels or the drivers so what it's doing is putting a higher percentage of the weight that is on that neck of the trailer on the rear of the Jeep and not quite as much going forward to the truck. So whatever uh, weight of that vehicle is transmitted to the front end of the trailer, not very much of it is hitting the truck. And that's real life, that's the way it is. So let's see that, you know, does SES model this? Well, we're gonna find out. So we'll do it with this trailer and you'll get the same load on a single low boy and I know that that's the load you can get so on both trailers so it's ideal way to test it. Okay, so let's say that's as far as we got. Let's see the difference. So how do we do? Oh, those two trees right there, that's sort of memorable. Just got past that uh, lead tree there, across the road. So let's, um, I'm gonna pause the video, or I could stop, I guess, pause, whatever, I'll pause, and I'll come back with the single low boy, same load. Okay, so here we are again. We've got the same load. We got, well, it's essentially the same trailer without the Jeep. So now that load on the, you know, the front half of the trailer are firmly on the driving axles of the truck and they're not shared distribution. You know, it looked like about 60, 40, maybe 65, 35, 35 in the truck, 65 on the Jeep. So now it's all squarely on the truck. So let's see if that gives us more traction going up the hill. And we will remember we got to those two trees and the diff lock was just kicking in. I have the automatic diff lock set even though it's not my preferred thing. It just happens to be the way it is. So let's see how we get on here. Maybe take note of where the diff lock kicks in too, if it even does. So.
getting too crazy here, but uh, we'll try it right here. See if we can drive about the same way we did last time. trees have come and gone a long time ago. Diff lock hasn't kicked in. We're going to make the hill. So I think that proves that they do model weight distribution. There's a big bump here for some reason. Look at that. I got a bunch of damage there in, uh, in the video. Anyway, so we'll stop there. We've proved that point now. Next up, shut the engine off so I don't have to compete with that. What I'm going to do, I'll pause again. I'm going to get a box trailer on. And I can get a big load on a box trailer. And then we're going to move the slider and see what happens when the slider gets moved to the rear as opposed to fully frontward on a 53 foot. And we should see a similar effect with the slider all the way to the rear. We should be able to go up the hill further because that'll place more weight on the front of the uh, trailer, hence on the drivers of the truck. So let's give that a go. So I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. And this time we've got a reefer on here. We got 42,000 pounds of soda ash. And uh, by the, I just went over to Prairie Sand and Gravel over at Heartbeat to get the load. But so with the, the trailer bogies or trailer wheels that far forward it's taking some load off the front now this may not be as dramatic as with the jeep but let's uh find out what happens i haven't i haven't tested it here we're just going from scratch so let's find out how far we get up the hill or how good we're doing and then we will put the wheels all the way to the back of the trailer and we should get more weight on the truck and see what happens. If this doesn't make a good test, we'll have to do similar to what I did on the uh, live stream. an hour okay oh maybe three or four miles an hour we weren't going very fast so let's um heck we don't need to pause let's oops let's just fly down to the bottom and we'll put the bogies to the back and see what happens Okay, so we we'll hit the magic button. Back up a bit so we don't have yeah, the same amount of run. So we went up there, we were in second or second low, and we were hammering on it. We're going, we weren't going five miles an hour, I don't think. So anyway, let's see what happens this time. Uh-oh. 
that doesn't help. difference. I might have to redo that. That was really brutal. But we are going noticeably faster. But I don't think we'll need to redo it. Yeah, I think that was fair to say that was better I could uh, I should um, do that again that was really bad driving my bad just got all excited and totally missed the shift let's scoot right down here down here in a hurry this time we're not going to be doing any fancy flying we're just giving her let's try that again going 10 miles an hour there so I uh, I think it's fairly conclusive that wasn't as uh, clear a demonstration as what we've done previously there's one more little thing we could try and that would be just go back down the hill a little bit and try the same thing we did in the uh, um, what do you call them live stream Let's see, we want to go back where the hill isn't quite as steep. Right there, let's try this. Now, what we're going to do... Uh, we will put... Let's get the uh, trailer to the back. Or the bogey's forward. Lock him in, and we're gonna see if we can just start off. See what happens. We'll do a parking brake start on the trailer. Trailer brake start. No, oh, we stop it. I have to try a lower gear. I have a different engine than I did. I think it might have. Well, kind of. Let's see. Now you give it a bit of throttle like you're not supposed to. That's not going to work big. Need a shorter gear, lower gear. Let's try it again. Okay, so that doesn't prove much. It's too steep, I think. This is one way of proving it. I guess we can spin the tires. Let's try taking the parking brake off. I don't know if we'll be able to move forward too. Let's see if we can... Yeah. They're fully ahead. Now we've got more weight on the drivers. Yeah, we spin them. Not only do we spin them, we're dragging, we're dragging the trailer up the hill. parking brakes on although the tires are turning. 
that's interesting. But we didn't, we weren't able to move it forward with the, uh, oops. Oh, you know why the brakes weren't on? We didn't lock the uh, trailer again. Let's try to do that again. Now, lock it. There we go. I'll put the trailer brake on. See what happens. Stalls it. Yeah, we weren't, it. we're not spinning the tires. That's the same thing. Same thing that happened in the live stream. Oh, there it goes. It's actually the yeah, trailer brake is on. It, to, but yeah, it's got a way more traction. So I think it proves it. I think that's fairly conclusive that. Uh, we do get we do get an advantage when those uh, wheels are back, so they are adjusting the weight distribution on the on the rig as we go. So that's pretty fantastic. I think that's really cool. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> oh, why do I do these things? Just stalling it but anyway i guess we should just leave it there but um yeah so that's pretty exciting news because what that means and they've been recognizing like i showed with the jeep that's years ago like whenever this ats expansion came out is when recon and i discovered that and um with the uh jeep taking the load and you guys are you know Try it yourself if you're in doubt. And um, I think it's kind of interesting. But now with the sliding bogey, and as many people have mentioned, uh, a sliding fifth wheel would add to that. Where, you know, you could slide the fifth wheel a bit forward, distribute some weight. And generally what you're trying to do, you're not doing this in real life for traction. You're doing this in real life to get the load distributed equally across the axles of the of the whole rig to not be putting too much weight and in a specific axle grouping and run afoul of the law because uh improperly improperly weighted trucks are what pound the highways out and um you need to be there's a reason that they are sticklers about it and it's to maintain the integrity of the road system and so it's not just for for giggles that you you have to be aware of this and when you're loading and you may have to if you have the ability to adjust the load at a scale when you're driven across it and you know you get called around back you got to do something you're too heavy here or there whatever and <laughs> You're not always the lucky guy who has sliders and can do something about it there. You may have to physically move cargo or get somebody from your company out there with another trailer and shift stuff from one trailer to another. It's It can be a nightmare. But the possibility is here now for SCS to expand on this. So very interesting and uh, just a little experiment. So thanks for watching and as always appreciate you guys for following along. Take care and bye for now.